All right, I think we have everyone that's going to be joining. Thank you all for joining. Um, and thanks for being so responsive today too. I wasn't sure we were gonna be able to make quorum, but I'm glad we did. Nice to see everyone. Um, so I'm just gonna get us going, starting off with our, um, our remote meeting procedures. So in keeping with an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency as amended by Governor Baker on February 12th, 2022, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by committee members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. The meeting will broadcast live and be recorded on ECAT. Um, you can, uh, while conducting meeting um, remotely, we'll endeavor to keep meeting operations as close to standard procedures as normal. However, the use of the platform will necessitate some additional meeting protocols. While committee members will be on video and audio, public participants will join the webinar as attendees, meaning they're muted with no video feed. Um, if you'd like to raise your hand, you can, uh, by phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand, or you can use the Q&A function in Zoom. Um, as in any public meeting, any indecent behavior will not be tolerated and anyone who abuses use of the meeting platform will be terminated from the meeting. Business will be handled at the times indicated on the agenda. Board members are asked to announce themselves when making a motion and second so that it will be clear to the audience and minute takers who made motions. All votes will be by roll call. And when all business indicated on the agenda has been completed, the members will vote to adjourn the meeting, signaling the end of the meeting and the termination of the ECAT recording. Um, at that point, all participants will be disconnected from the webinar. Um, I think that's it. We'll go ahead and get going. It's 635. Um, I'd like to take roll and make sure that we have everyone present. Can we start in alphabetical order? Greg Barger. Uh, Liz Bornstein. Karen Chan. Sergio Ramo. Sorry, Catherine Foster. Thank Michelle's you. trying to get back in. She got booted off. Okay. I think we'll have to wait for her. Make sure we have our quorum. Aren't we 11? Or 12. Who do we not count? Let me double check. I have 11. 11, not, not counting uh, the civil rights officer. Correct. Oh, that's who we don't count. Okay, all right. So we have quorum, we'll go ahead and get going and we'll give, I'll keep an eye out for Michelle and, and add her to the panelists as soon as she rejoins. Um, do I have, um, has everyone had opportunity to review and approve so we can move, move ahead and approve the minutes that Kelly distributed on May 6th? Just one correction on their members not present, it's Keith Boone, not Kevin Boone. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you, Craig. You're welcome. Any other changes to the meeting minutes? Okay, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Barger. Devonshire, yes. Bornstein, Bornstein yes. Foster, yes. yes. Oh, <clears throat> Durance, yes. All right, we have our meeting minutes approved. All right, so the next um, agenda item is our Pride event. Uh, Amy has provided us a very thorough update. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't able to join today. She had a, another commitment. But we've, um, she's been making amazing progress on our Pride event. And for those of you who've been joining our subcommittee meeting, you'll know that there's been a lot of activity. So first off, I wanna mention, I stopped by the town hall today 
and um, I did see that we received uh, $2,000 of donations to date. And, um, and I will work with um, the treasurer and the accountant to go ahead and, and get that um, money uh, deposited for, for our use. But I think that's great progress so far. And, and actually, it really would cover, um, at least you know, from the estimates that we've made so far, a really good portion of um, our investments to date. So some really good notes there. Um, Amy has 11 confirmed crafters or vendors who will be joining us at the Pride event. Um, all the paperwork has been handed into the town and has been approved. Um, we're still waiting for to hear back from Flourish. Uh, so Beth, she asked if maybe you could help follow up on that one. Beth That's is um, okay. in attendees. Can you move her over to a panelist? Oh, OK. On here. Okay, let's see. There you are. Here I am. Hello. Hello. Right now. Um, Beth, do you have any updates on Flourish? Amy had mentioned that she's still waiting to hear back for confirmation. No, and I've reached out a couple times too. I'll text her and I'll email her and see. Um, okay. And we can kind of go from there. All right, perfect. So um, 11 confirmed crafters and vendors, five confirmed food vendors. Uh, there was four from the original batch, which is La Odessa, Farmer's Daughter, Pudega, and uh, Sweet 16 ice cream truck. And now we also have added Sweetness and Honey, who will be serving or selling macarons, macarons, I should say. Um, Amy has done a walkthrough with Jen to kind of figure out the layout and everything is all set. Um, they also walk through rain plans and uh, she has tents if we need them. So we'll make sure to keep an eye on the weather that week. We're not gonna need them though, because it's not gonna rain of course, but, uh, but it's good to have backup plans. Uh, volunteers are in good shape. She said, we still need a few folks for parking and cleanup, um, and we need a volunteer to pick up water at Roche Brothers who don't, like, generously donated water bottles for our event on Friday, June 17th. So I don't know if anybody would, is available to volunteer for that at all. I can do Roche. that. I'll do that. Thank you, Kathy. Um, perfect. Um, she said, assuming Karen is running the HRC booth, do we have table and chairs? Um, I don't have, I have chairs. Does anybody have a folding table we could borrow? Do we want a card table or one of the, or the white table? The long table? Yes. Yeah, I have table. two, I have two folding, uh, those folding uh, long tables if you want to use those. Okay, one would be great. Okay. You want me to bring it? You want to turn it off, hand it off to somebody, or how do you want to do that? Yeah, if you could just bring it that day, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. And can we have tents? I forget. Because Amy has my tent if you need it. Um, I don't think we need it unless it rains. It's not going to rain, Beth, so it's all right. It's not going to rain. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to rain. Always sunny in Easton. Always sunny. Um, Amy said, can we put up the wings display? So I know Allie has that, and I know Allie signed up to be at the event, so I'll follow up with her on that. And, okay, that part I already have. I need to order the thank you sign. Okay, that's good. Um, Easton PD, I connected with um, Deputy Boone and he, has uh, put in the request to ensure that we have police present at the Pride event, so we're good to go there. Stickers and pins, um, Amy ordered those and we've received those, so we're good to go there. She asked if um, we're all set from a, with the DJ Beth, I think you said that we're good to go there, right? Yeah, Lena is ready. She has her playlist and is reluctantly emceeing as well, so. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Um, Amy asks, will they be announcing the tea dance? 
or do they know that we want to do a tea dance? She doesn't, but I can tell her. <laughs> It was your idea. <laughs> well, and then I thought it kind of went um, away, but I'll I'll text her and, and say, okay. hey, listen. Well, because isn't the last bit when the children's musician playing? Right. I, I think that's what we we're trying to kind of plot out. So I think the next activity, which I know we have a Pride event meeting tomorrow, is to kind of plot out the agenda for the day right or for the few hours that we have just so that this way we could start to kind of give that notification to our dj and our musician and, and so on and so forth um so i think that'll be a, a nice thing for us to do and then if we wanted to publicize that we could also do that as well great awesome can you resend out the sign up genius i'm looking through and i can't find the links for um volunteering or tasks. I can probably help with cleanup. I just need to double check timing. Yep, um, somebody have that handy. I'll just ask Amy for it after. I'll look for it right now. Thank you. Um, yeah, so actually that's a good reminder for this group. At first we said, oh, our committee, everyone will be there, so we don't need to have them sign up. But I guess if you would like to sign up and you know you do, do anticipate being there for the time frame, um, definitely go ahead and do that. I actually think almost all the slots are full except for that parking situation. Um, are there enough t-shirts for all the volunteers? Yeah, there should be. Okay. Well. There should be. So we have 36, we have I want to say. 30, oh, okay. Then yeah, there should be, because I think we only asked for 12, 8, and 8. Okay. So we have to be yeah. on top of having people return them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Especially because we might need some on Monday for the proclamation event. I have to watch them. <laughs> I'll wash them on Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Um, our Facebook or the Facebook page for the event is currently up to 300, um, which is awesome. Yeah. So that jumped over 100 in just a couple of weeks. So Amy said, please keep on promoting. So I've been driving around. I've been seeing all the signs still around town. I don't think any of them have been taken and down, at least from, from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. And um, couple of yeah. many. Did you, sorry? We've Did you lost know? a couple, but not many. Okay. okay. And I know, Kathy, you had been putting out flyers everywhere. Um, so I think we've, you know, probably saturated the town with these. Have folks been seeing them around? Mm hmm Okay, awesome. And I connected with um, uh, the principal at the high school, Kelly Cavanaugh, and she had mentioned that she was going to help publicized throughout the school with flyers. I know that they also have pride event signs on property. And um, I also asked if they would be willing to do like morning announcements, they do that. Um, so she said, yes, she would. So, you know, we have their partnership, which is awesome. So that is the pride event update. Anybody have any questions? Oh, and I know the um, Honor Society, they posted, they sent things around too to their, or at least I sent it a long, for them to volunteer as well as pass the flyer around. So hopefully. Perfect. Awesome. All right, good deal. Next up on the agenda is the proclamation event. Um, Liz or Kathy, do you wanna provide an update on that? Yeah. Okay, so this is scheduled for Monday evening. So busy fun weekend in Easton. Um, and I think it actually was really effective to send that out as a combined email to allies. I know RMK used a lot of that same messaging to reach out to their group. So our event um, is gonna be Monday evening, June 20th, kind of late afternoon. So four to six at uh, Cuisa Gardens behind the library. Um, we are still finalizing the agenda, but the rough plan is to invite everyone there to um, hear a reading of the proclamation, a history of the impetus for creating the proclamation, um, kind of the HRC's 
role uh, in helping to finalize it and then hear from all the signatories about why it was important to them as a representative of their particular entity or town group to sign, um, as well as hearing from a community member or two about the importance to them of living in a town that has a proclamation that has been created and signed on by um, various stakeholders. Kathy, what am I missing? The book. Well, and then the second half is the one town, one read. Mm -hmm. one, one book, one town, I guess it's called. And encouraging people to, to sign on in support of the proclamation. Oh, right. And we're asking people to register. So there's an Eventbrite um, registration that I will send out to all the allies, and you guys are on that list too. Um, so just so we have an, uh, a general idea of how many people are coming. There's going to be refreshments. There's an ice cream truck. Mm -hmm. um, there are going to be bookmarks handed out with a book. We're working with Easton Middle School students who I think there is an uh, anti-defamation league club or group at the middle school as well. And they are working with one of the English teachers to create an informational flyer about Juneteenth. So why it is a federal holiday, because that is also part of the messaging about why we are holding this event on Juneteenth. And we're going to be asking people to sign um, in support of the proclamation and giving them a copy of it. You can't do that now online, right? So no. <laughs> we um that that's falling into the category of like shouldn't we be able to or wouldn't it be nice if but we have yet to find someone who can set up a, an electronic portal where you can say yeah and you put your name in and ideally it's anonymous right so like a fundraising thermometer we've got like 50 signatories 100 signatories without necessarily having people's name or identifying information out there um if anyone knows someone who knows how to do that, let Kathy or me know, please. Mm -hmm. For now, it's on paper. So I wonder, did they do something like that for, what am I thinking of? I guess it's almost like signing a petition kind of thing. It's kind of like, so it's some combination of like signing papers for someone to run for office or signing like a change.org or move on petition. Right. Um, right. But we haven't been able to figure that out to exist independent of that kind of infrastructure. I see, I see. Okay. Um, we would love as many HRC members there as possible. Karen, um, are you planning to be there? Yep. Okay, good. Um, one concern also was that the attendee list was looking a little short on people of color. So we also want to have it a good mix of allies who are not people of color and residents and people who work in the town who are people of color to encourage that conversation about why the proclamation is valuable. And any of you planning to attend who have spouses or children who are old enough or willing to volunteer, we have jobs for them. So we'll need basic things like um, people walking around with clipboards to show people what the petition is and give people an opportunity to sign or sitting at a table to man the one book, one read table and just simply like collecting their emails for the discussion and handing out bookmarks. Um, there is a donation for the one book, one read, um, a $5 donation. Kathy, I don't recall... Um, where the funds are going to. I imagine it is to one book, one read, but I don't recall I, that being discussed. I think it's just to reimburse them. So it's the, the donations for $5 to get the book. So the one book, yeah. the, the book that the town is reading this summer, mm -hmm. um, which is a great deal because it costs a lot more if you buy it on your own. It does. Um, if the volunteer shirts are available, I can take them on Saturday to wash them, to bring them. Um, we haven't yet reached a consensus on what the volunteers will be wearing because it's a variety of different volunteers. 
And are you guys doing a sign up changes for the volunteers? Possibly has not been determined. Okay. They're, they're mostly filled um, unofficially right now. Yeah, I don't think we have a problem. So it might be something where if we do need additional volunteers, it would go out um, to our group and possibly to the ally list and just have them uh, email probably Denise Lane directly. Okay, awesome. Any questions around the proclamation? Here's, here's a question we didn't have an answer to. Um, and this is kind of related to pride publicity. Any thoughts on how to summarize and distribute uh, that the event happened now that we don't have a local newspaper? So I um, emailed a couple of reporters at the Enterprise and a couple of reporters at Wicked Local mm -hmm. and just sent them the flyer and, and asked them, I told them to get in touch with Amy. One directly. I have yeah. not we've heard from any of them. I did. We did actually. We heard from someone um, at the Wicked Local whose name is escaping me right now. Um, Margaret, I believe was her name. And um, I, I think she was actually very specifically looking to do an article around LGBTQ plus um, health resources. So she she saw our pride um, flyer and was wondering, you know, what type of um, vendors we might have or resources we might have at the event. And so I'm connecting her with Sergio to try to make that uh, conversation happen because um, she was interested, I think, in in hoping to maybe publish something in the very near future. I don't know, Sergio. I know you've been a, a little bit. Um, busy this week. I don't know if you had an opportunity to connect with oh, Margaret yeah. yet. We're meeting or speaking on Tuesday. Perfect. So we emailed and gave each other's numbers, but my voice is just recovering now, so we haven't been able to talk too much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, so there you go. So hopefully we will get some coverage in the Wicked Local for our Pride event through through that channel. Um, and, you know, I think through that conversation, potentially we can also see if Margaret will be our maybe ongoing contact for other HRC events or HRC-like events. Um, but I figured that that would be a definitely a good start. So thanks, Kathy, for making that connection for us. Were there other um, communication channels you were thinking of, Liz, that we wanted to explore or try to see if we have any reach out opportunity? No, I think that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, next up is partner collaboration updates. Anything else outside of the the proclamation event? Share well, with the group, any RMK activities? Yeah, the one book, one town. So. Okay. We are, uh, for the whole town, we're encouraging everyone to read It's an Act of Love, a Celebration of American Life from the StoryCorps Project, compiled by Dave Isay. Um, we're going to do the kick kickoff event is at just immediately following the proclamation, so on the 20th. Um, the $5 donation will get you a book. Um, and then there's going to be a series of activities across the summer. Um, up, I think four read-alouds at either the Senior Center or at Elise Circle, maybe at the NRT. And we're getting um, high school volunteers to help us with that. Um, and then there's going to be two um, book discussion, um, one in July and one in August, and probably one in September. And I think October is going to be the culminating event uh, to wrap up the whole thing. But our, our goal is to get as many people as involved. Um, I don't know if, if people have read or heard about StoryCorps, but it's interviews that people do. 
They're short, they're easy to read. Um, they're very poignant, make you cry. Um, and we hope to have discussions around those topics as we go through. Um, the book was chosen because it, it, it touches a lot of different aspects of the human experience, but it's not particularly political because we didn't want to start with something that was overly political. Um, so it should be an interesting. Do you want to add anything, Beth? No, I, I think you captured all of it. The only thing else I would say is uh, it will dovetail with our own Easton stories. So kind of collaborating and kicking off with that. So I don't know if folks are going to be at the proclamation and start our Easton stories project or if that's something that we'll see um, further on down the line too. So that will be fun. And there's some talking points or some suggestions in the back of the book too. So how, um, beyond the, the proclamation event, how would folks go about getting the book? So we're going to send out flyers. You can get the book. The library will have some copies. Paperback Junction has some copies. If you come to the event, you can get it. It's hard to get on Amazon because it's an older book and there's not a lot of copies available. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, it is the summer reading, required reading for the rising juniors at the high school and they have purchased books for all the students as well as a number of the faculty. And I think there we're trying to do it. There are some stories that you can get on audio and we're also in the process of looking for um, people to read to folks as well. So I think that notice just went out. I think if I saw it today that they were looking for volunteer readers. And then I think somebody was supposed to inquire if we could actually record the readings and then that way we would have them as long as we didn't share because we wouldn't want to violate the copyright. So one um, last thing in terms of maybe looking for folks to read, um, has, has there been any consideration for offering it um, with ASL? We did talk about that. I think the issue is um, that would be part, I don't know if they have it in Braille, to be honest with you. We did talk about making sure that it was accessible though. Okay. Right, they were looking to look for someone. I don't know if you can that. Excellent. Thank you. Any other updates around um, other collaboration activities? So we, Michelle and I, we were at a superintendent's committee last, at our last meeting. They have this great organization called the 84, um, which is students, here. I'm going to actually put it in the chat right now. Um, it's a quote, state mo statewide movement uh, for youth fighting tobacco use. So there were folks, uh, students from both the junior high and high school who were there, and they're just looking for more opportunities to present and get the word out. So I thought that this might be something great for them to do maybe when the school year returns, um, just practice and opportunities for them to, to meet additional folks. They also presented at I think oh, it was right. the last school committee meeting. So if you want to go back and just watch their presentation and see if that's something that is interesting. But they're doing an awful lot of initiatives in the schools, both schools as a group. I wonder if um, it might be helpful for representatives. I mean, we could, you know, we can give an overview, but I'd love to have and maybe we can work with the principals on this, some of the representatives from the different clubs in the middle school and high school and come and talk to us about what they do and what their mission is and how we can partner. Oh, absolutely. I thought that's where you were going with it. Yeah, I, I think that'd be great. If you want. What'd you say? You can reach out to Eileen. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Beth, I'm wondering how this is tying in with the eighth grade civics project because 
It's just- well, but it, but it might be because like I know Jonah's group is doing vaping. So I'm curious oh. whether they're aware of this and I wouldn't be surprised if there are other groups talking about that as well. Yeah, I have to assume, uh, but to your point, Liz, they didn't, um, I don't recall that it was like directly related, but go ahead, Michelle. There's there's an active student group in EMS and OA that is being overseen, so overseen by faculty. So it's, it's out there and I'm sure that, uh, well, I know that it's being very well publicized, you know, they're looking to educate other students and the public and Okay. I don't want to take the bubble out of their presentation. <laughs> yeah, no, this one, yeah, their presentation was different from what the civics project is, or at least from what I can see. But to that point, I wonder if we can get a list. I mean, I know, what is it, the 15th that they're presenting? I think it would be interesting if there were groups that did projects that might align with this mission to have them come and present or talk, I think if we could get more student involvement and not just us, uh, it might be helpful. Matter of fact, they're right. doing a presentation at Far or uh, an event at Frothingham the same day we're doing our Pride event. June's a busy month. Yeah, mm. from 11 to 1, so people can go back and forth, but if you have time to check it out. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, the next topic on our agenda is the HRC committee membership. So some memberships did come up for renewal um, this month including Amy, Kathy, and Allison. Amy and Kathy have submitted their renew renewal applications, um, but Allie will not be renewing. Um, also, Irene has shared that she'll be stepping down from the committee at the end of June as well. So we have two openings. Um, I know, uh, Craig, we had started to socialize this with just, you know, just folks in, in our ally group and folks that have uh, raised interest previously as well. So. I'm thinking you might have started to receive some applications. So two, we found, um, the last I checked, and I think I told you it, we, we had two applications um, uh, outside of Catherine and, and, um, and Amy, uh, Cheryl Sklar and Jean Garner were the two that I knew of as of last week. I haven't checked to see if there's any additional uh, applications at this point. I know of somebody who is thinking of applying, um, but I want to check with her before I throw the name out there. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, so that activity will probably start to shift around, um, I guess, by our next, by around July time frame. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, what day, uh, what, um, what which select board meeting we're going to have those folks in for interviews, I, I don't know yet. Is Irene's position officially listed? Um, I thought she, well, I don't know. Because I, I recall know. in the past, it's not until she officially puts in a notice that she is resigning that it becomes available to fill. So it might only be Allie's available yeah, you, right now. If you want to let her know to notify the clerk's office that she that she's resigning. Yep, I'll follow up with her on that. Finding myself a note because I need to do those things. Um, okay. Any other action items that we wanted to review? I have three. <laughs> okay, uh go for it. Well, it's because I read the minutes. All right, so one is a summary of the Spring Fest at NRT. We should probably document that. Um, I know Karen and I were there with Amy. I feel like others of you were as well, and maybe I just have amnesia. I know the uh, hand-dipped chocolate pretzels were a big hit. 
Um, I think we sold a shirt or two, but I'm not sure what the final tally was. And I know the origami was a hit and we had a lot of people visit who were happy to hear that we existed in town. Maybe we got a sign up or two on the ally list. There was a pastor, I believe, from... We, we got, uh, I think it was eight. Okay. That joined our list. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone else has other information um, to summarize it. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the pretzels were, were good. I think that um, Amy mentioned they were all sold out. So we'll have them at Pride as well, since it was such a good turnout for that. And um, yeah, I mean, it was such a windy day, but it was, the weather wasn't really on, on the side of, uh, of the NRT that day, but actually it was still a, a very good turnout. Um, they did a really good job with making the most of it, considering mm -hmm the fact that there was a like a hurricane going on <laughs> with no rain but lots and lots of wind um i thought it i thought it was a really nice nicely done event for sure i agree okay so that's a summary of that um the an, an action item that carried over from last month was the publicity list have we made any progress about sort of documenting this in a central location Well, we're we're kind of creating a publicity list just through the pride activities, and so Amy has documented kind of all of our major um, partners, uh, mm -hmm. some of the, the the chief stakeholder groups, and um, just even like we've talked about earlier, you know, when we do publicize an event, how some of it is boots on the ground and getting flyers out, some of it is contacting the media. So I, I want to say that just even the Pride event activities will help to produce this publicity list, but separate from that, no additional activity has taken place. It's been all about Pride. Well, no, that makes sense. I, I think that's a good opportunity to revisit who we're reaching out to and how. Um, let's just make sure afterwards we have that captured in a way that's available to the whole committee so it's easy to access for events going forward. Yeah, Amy's created this awesome Trello board um, for Pride that we've been using, and it captures, it has a lot of, just so that this way for next year, if we end up doing another Pride event, it's almost like a rinse and reuse, but the template is, is actually very good. So, so yes, definitely um, we'll work with Amy, Amy to get that circulating to the group. Okay. Um, selling shirts at Pride or the proclamation okay. event? Is this something we want to do? Is that part of the pride model and staffing and volunteering? Well, there's going to be an NRT, I mean, an NRT, a pride's table, correct? That's right. So we could sell them there. Also, do we still have um, signs? The hate has no home here? Yeah. Yes, I have them. Yes. We should bring those as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think whatever doesn't get sold on Saturday, we'll bring on Monday. Yes. Okay. Good idea. So yeah, signs, t-shirts, pretzels, um, stickers, and bracelets. Bracelets. Uh, I have bracelets as well. Pride bracelets that we ordered. Okay. Um, the last other action item is the holiday observance calendar. So um, Michelle and I had done some work and then Michelle worked with Amy to fine tune um, an update on the holiday observance calendar for the 2022-23 school year. I emailed it to you all just now um, and I can share it on my screen as well. Um, we had gotten feedback in the past that there was a need and desire on behalf of the school community to have this information early in the summer while teachers and administrators and coaches are doing planning for the upcoming year, um, which is part of the push to have this approved at the June meeting to be able to, to distribute um, as soon as possible. 
this is a pretty finalized draft, but I think we still need some additional eyes on it just to catch details for anything from formatting to content. And we usually send it out to the allies as well because they are a diverse group um, to have people look for content or holidays or religions with which they might have a lot of familiarity. So some content is the same year to year. Um, others, uh, we've added, I think, one or two new holidays this year that hadn't been on prior calendars. And some of that is just due to the nature of the calendar and some of them following in the school year that hadn't in the past. Um, and others just involve our ongoing education about what are appropriate holidays to include. I know this is a lot to digest and look through right now. Um, Amy had suggested a provisional approval subject to minor edits um, that we might receive from the allies or that someone might catch upon a closer read. I think that makes sense. So you're looking for a motion to approve the calendar now today so it can be sent out? Well, subject to any corrections or clarifications from the allies. So moved. I'll second. Are you comfortable with that, Craig? Yeah, I just, I, I, I was going to make a motion, but that's okay. all right. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I don't know how you, how you go about rescinding the vote or, or having a new vote, um, um, but I guess it's okay. I think the idea would be um, to give a couple weeks for other eyes, share any feedback that came in from the allies, um, note any minor aesthetic or formatting, you know, edits or corrections that needed to be done. So I think the it motion was to get it to the schools before our next meeting, hypothetically. Say right. that again, Michelle. This would uh, this vote tonight would allow us to get it to the schools hypothetically before our next meeting. Correct. I mean, assuming you know if something big came up or some something whatever Amy and I or Liz looked at it and said no, it needs to come back to us. So maybe that could be the motion that. Um, I don't know how you would you would word it, but authorizing the three of us to. So I mean, we have somewhat of a subcommittee that's been formed, who's been working on this, right? Between Liz and Amy um, and Michelle. Was, yeah. Does that sound right? So can we just vote to um, allow the subcommittee to finalize the calendar for distribution? I think that's appropriate. Yes, I think that's very appropriate. All right, so moved. Second, Devonshire. Barger, yes. Bornstein, yes. Ken, yes. Durant, yes. Foster, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. We have our approval. <laughs> So if any of you see anything um, that you think needs an edit, send it to Michelle or Amy or me. Um, let's say within the next week would be <laughs> ideal. And in the meantime, Kathy will get you a copy to share with the allies as well and maybe give them a, a week or two turnaround. Okay. Thank you. Those are my three. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I, playing around with the Zoom here. I do see we do have um, public participation, just kind of waiting to see if um, there are any questions from the public for today's meeting at all. And I'm just checking the chat as well as our Q&A. Um, but I don't see anything here. Anything else that um, we didn't get to cover? Before you know what might be turn. good? Oh, our meeting. Yeah, um, before oh, we get ahead. to our next meeting, Kathy, could you just reiterate for the record how someone can become an ally 
if they are interested in watching or listening. Huh. If you would like to become an ally, you should go to the Town of Easton Human Rights Committee. It will give you our email address. Somebody else might know it better than I. And uh, just send an email and say, I want to join the ally list. And you'll be put on that list and we'll keep you up to date for all the amazing events that we host and as well as other human rights related events that are held in the area. I believe the email is humanrights at easton.ma.us. And what is our what is our count at Kathy for our mm -hmm. ally list? It's between 160 and 170. Maybe we can get it up over 200 by the end of the summer. Yeah, by, with the, by the end of that weekend of events. <laughs> Right. That sounds like a good plan. Okay, so typically in the summer, um, we have uh, chosen to take a little break from our meeting just based on challenging schedules and travel. Um, I don't know if, if folks would like to kind of stick to that and skip our July, we'll start with July meeting. Um, any thoughts around that? that one though after the pride event just to kind of touch base before we break to the summer yeah okay so you rec we're, we're recommending we keep july and um and then we look at august that may also depend on our membership that's a good point yeah what's i'm not available the first week in july that okay. overlaps with 4th of July, correct? It does. Well, if we're it doing does, just yeah. a summary of the event, could we do like a late June and then break for July and August? Why we still have the same group? Um, so, you know what? The summary of the event will likely happen in the subcommittee. I think that we could probably do that instead. The folks who would like to join that Wednesday subcommittee meeting, right? Because Amy will likely keep that on if we have the event on the 18th. So the 22nd, I could see if we could do a debrief of the Pride event through the subcommittee. And, and that's open to everyone who would like to join. And then this way we won't have another HRC meeting. How do folks feel about that? I think that I, makes How How long do we have remote meetings? Well, it's gonna be reevaluated. Um, in late January, I'm sorry, late July, I believe. So they July allowed me to book the Zoom. The yeah, they, they allowed me to book the Zoom for July just in case we needed the meeting. But after that, they said we'd have to wait. There's a piece of uh, of the budget that um, proposes, uh, I think, December 15th for remote meetings. I don't know where where that stands uh, in the process. I know that it's the budget is, is in the um, joint committee. Uh, for negotiations now, so I don't know where the, where that uh, particular piece is situated. I don't mind Michelle's suggestion to put another meeting in the last week in June to avoid the July 4th week and then meet again at the beginning of August. To not use the subcommittee meeting, you mean? Well, I think the subcommittee is going to use its meeting regardless, but that's not a public meeting. Okay. And what are folks availability for um, end of June? Are we talking about the 28th of June? Is that what you're suggesting, Liz? Um, yes. Although, Craig, I'm also thinking of when the select board might be meeting and if we would have um, any any people approved? Well, actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if they technically could come in for Allie's term because that goes through June. Right. That's right. So that wouldn't really serve a purpose, even if we had had a meeting and applicants and people sworn in. Right. Uh, we've got the thirteenth is, is one meeting. Um, and then the 27th, those are the two 
regularly scheduled select board meetings. We have a couple others, but they're not regularly scheduled ones. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I'm not sure um, there's much value from a membership perspective of meeting on the 28th. It seems like we would need to wait until July for new members regardless. Well, would, but, you be missing, uh, would you be missing people? Would, would Allie and, and Irene not, not be willing to meet at the end of June? And you have the same group that we have right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just trying to think. I, I won't be available at the end of June, the last week in June. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, that, please don't let that stop the group. I'm just trying to figure out the value. If the value is to focus on the Pride event, the debrief, I would say let's leverage the subcommittee for that. Um, and, you know, we can gather public um, comments during our next kind of formal meeting which it sounds like we'd likely be skipping July because even at the beginning of July, we wouldn't know who our new committee members are just yet, right? right. Just based right. on the timing of when the expiration of the membership occurs as well as when the select board would be meeting to review applicants. So I think our best bet would be to meet in August. This August 2nd? First August 2nd. Okay. How does that sound to the committee? Sure. Okay. Okay. It's in my calendar. All right. Then it's real. <laughs> Gotta be real. Okay. Right. I'll make sure um, when. Uh, Kelly, when we distribute the meeting minutes to that, I'll make sure I respond all to the to that and let folks know that that's the next meeting date. Um, Karen, I'll let you know as soon as uh, I'll let you know as soon as I know what day a select board is going to be doing the interviews. I'll let you know. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Um, and yes, if you have folks that are interested in being part of our committee, where I feel like we're finally hitting our cadence and we've gotten a lot done in the last year or so, um, some really exciting events coming up for, for this group, some, some new things too, which is, you know, even more exciting and, and great for us. So, um, yeah, I think everybody today doesn't sound like we have any other items to review. Um, I don't see any public participation. Appreciate everyone joining. Uh, I'll see you all at the Pride event and our proclamation event. And uh, everyone have a great night. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Barger. Second, Foster. Barger, yes. Bornstein, yes. And yes. Kevin Chari, yes. Foster, yes. Oh. Ramoyas. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good uh, night. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you on the 18th. Good night.